Good evening, everyone. It's Monday, and we have our Power Hour. Hey, guys, join me if you are available. Today's topic, we're actually going to be continuing um, last uh, conversation. It's overcoming troubles, and then we will continue to overcoming discouragement. So, guys, if you are there, if you're online, join me. I hope I am. I am live. Um, and let me know if you are there so I can see you guys. I'm going to connect to my desktop as well. Good evening. Happy Monday. Happy start of the week. Let me know as well if you can hear me okay, as, um, if my micro microphone is okay, if my, my video is okay. Uh, let me know. Give me feedback on that one. Good evening. Say hello. I see there's, uh, for now, six people in there. Uh, joining me. Thank you for so much for joining me earlier. I see you guys. Uh, just say hello and wave and let me know that you are there. Hey, hey, Carla. Hi, good evening to you, Carla um, Lagarto. Let me just connect to, to mine. I want to see... Um, I want to see your your comments and feedback. So I'm looking at a bigger screen here on my side. So um, let me just connect here. So okay, we are live. Okay, hang on. Okay. Hey, good evening. Thank you so much for coming in. I see more people. Nicole, Freyla. Good evening to you guys, ladies. Rod, hi. Good evening. Happy Monday, happy start of the week. Uh, today, we are going to be continuing uh, overcoming troubles. I have two more additions to um, how to overcome that. And then we will continue with overcoming discouragement. So it's kind of a, a two-topic night tonight. Um, and I hope you guys are ready for, uh, for this conversation and for the week. To start the week with with this conversation here okay i see you so guys if you have any questions during our conversation as usual right type your questions in the comment section below good evening i see spot see spot thank you <laughs> um robert and joe nicole evie hi neil my husband salvi hello good evening i hope you're working out tonight right so um we are going to wait for more people we have four minutes to wait maybe three minutes um let, we can start praying a minute before nine so um for uh, i don't see anyone new i think you guys are all marie hi good evening to I, I think you guys are all um you know uh, what do you call this it's you guys are not new in the power hour but just in case someone here is is listening and you are new to uh the power hour um it's one hour <laughs> that's why we call it power hour and we do it on mondays and thursdays now so mondays and thursdays so instead of wednesday we don't have wednesday anymore mondays and thursdays and also occasionally we do an in-person bible study on a saturday if you want to uh, be posted be invited with that one uh, let me know because we do not post it publicly <laughs> anyways um good evening good evening uh, we have two minutes i see rv hi rv i hope jan is with you rachel hi good evening to you uh shema hi good evening Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. So, um, as I said, we have two topics tonight. We're going to continue overcoming troubles and then overcoming discouragement. Say stans, good evening to you. Ate Lane, good evening. So guys, while we are waiting, what is your main learning so far? Like, what is your biggest aha so far? So far, we have talked about overcoming offense, right? Part one and part two. Uh, and then overcoming uh, strife and then overcoming troubles, right? So, so far, can you let me know and can you just share with the group? What's your biggest learning? What's your biggest aha from, from what we have talked about, right, in this series? I'm calling it a series now because it's uh, the fifth video, so uh, let me know, share it with the group as well. What's your biggest learning, right? Even from the past uh, topics, offense, trouble, strife, right? And then today we're going to continue with discouragement. 
Um, Sheila, hi, good evening. Mitch and Adrian, good evening sa inyong dalawa. Um, Claire, hi, good evening to you. Tita Malu, good evening. Chari, hi, magandang gabi. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna look for your comments later. Olive, hi, good evening to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> nice for you to join us again. You're very consistent. Hello, hello, Roselle, hello to you. Ayan, we have one minute, so let's just go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for a beautiful start of the week, Lord. And I just, I just thank you, Lord, for another hour of us um, talking about your word, receiving revelations from you, Lord, that we're able to apply in our lives. Lord, we thank you. We lift up to you, Lord God, our conversation tonight. We lift up to you, Lord, our hearts and our minds, Lord, to be open to receive everything that you want us to receive tonight, all the learnings that we can apply in our daily lives so lord we just uh dedicate this time with you to you as well and a plea the blood of jesus over our conversation over our internet connections and our devices thank you lord for tonight holy spirit we acknowledge you speak through me O oh lord god let your will be spoken in jesus name amen okay so um let's let's go ahead and get started right so as, as i was saying and guys hey if you have any uh if you have any comments and I hope you do. Uh, I was asking, what is your main learning so far in this series, right? Any your biggest aha moment, mo? You know, when when you were listening to either the strife, we're talking about the strife, the offense, um, the trouble, right? Overcoming all of those things, and then tonight we're going to be continuing trouble and also jumping to our new topic, discouragement. Okay, overcoming discouragement. So let me know um, while I. Uh, open my notes here let me know guys what's your learning right what is your biggest learning uh, good evening Aisha uh, watching with Eman hi Eman good evening sis Blinky good evening to you um, okay so wala kayong comment wala kayong natutunan <laughs> baka walang learning so what's what's the point of this <laughs> learnings or maybe something that even if it even if it's so simple right that you um it, it's an aha moment because you actually were able to apply it in your life or start applying it in your life you know something like that i don't know um yeah share it with with me and share it with everyone in the group as well anyways while i wait and i'm gonna expect you know some comments here later um let me just do a rehash on what we talked about about overcoming trouble and this is gonna be quick right uh we talked about again bottom line that i was saying holy spirit the holy spirit the guidance the, the specific instructions from the holy spirit and the word of god these two things the word of god is jesus right and the word of god these two things are enough you don't need anything else, right? These two things are enough for us to overcome all, right? All our troubles in life. But then again, of course, from these, we can expand it to different ways, to different practical things, to different, um, a more um, uh, focused topic, right? And that's what we did. So we, ex we have expanded it to uh, how to overcome. We said that understand that troubles are not from the Lord right understand that troubles are not from the lord john 10 10 jesus stated it very clearly and distinct um he he, he put a very distinct um difference right a difference between his kingdom and the kingdom of of the enemy the thief comes does not come except to what to steal to kill and to destroy so anything that has stealing in your, from your life killing and and destroying in your life right that's from the enemy and that's what jesus said but he said that i have come so that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly or have it to the full in different versions of the bible so life abundant life and having it to the full that's from jesus right and so again um, if, if you are not understanding this, guys, and if you need more details on, 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 on these things, go back. This is, again, um, just uh, what is going through what we had discussed in overcoming troubles in the last power hour. Okay, and then uh, number two is change your expectations. Okay, uh, understand that there are giant, giants in your promised land. 
there are giants in your promised land you will need to fight a battle yes you will need to fight a battle to gain your territory right and know that with confidence and with boldness that when you do you are going to win right you are going to win because jesus had already provided the victory for us it's just us coming into agreement with that victory and enforcing it in our lives but to expect that there's not going to be any struggle there's not going to be any issue it's 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 not the case right there again there are giants in the land and there's a difference i, I mentioned about this I, there's a difference between performance and obedience right a lot of times we say oh i don't want to do that because that's performance that's works right not necessarily because if you are doing what you heard from the holy spirit and if you are seeking specific instructions from the holy spirit so that you can break through financially so that you can break through in your relationships break through in in your health in in your body whatever that is that you're needing right there are going to be specific instructions from the Holy Spirit. It may be uh, very simple. It may be not as simple as you think or not as logical, right? But bottom line, when you hear an instruction, you have to do something. And that's called obedience, right? You obey. And um, that's different from performance. Performance is just doing, do, 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 right? Just doing the things that you think um, uh, is, is what you need to do to accomplish what you need to accomplish but that's not what we're talking about okay and then the number three is persevere okay we talked about persevere persevering is bottom line okay you heard an instruction from the lord you follow <clears throat> sorry you followed and it didn't work out or nothing's changed in your in your situation right persevere do not quit um that means you have to ask again holy spirit what's next what am i missing lord what can i do what else can i do lord to cooperate with with your will with your purpose in my life what else can i do what revelations do i need to receive lord god in order to get to my breakthrough to get out of this situation to get out of my trouble right so that's persevering that's like not quitting that's just standing and you know that you know that solutions are there you just need to seek the lord for specifics right okay so now i'm going to add to this okay i'm going to add to this and then the number four is okay before i do that let me see let me see if you have any any some answers for me i, I was asking in the beginning what is your main learning here in this series overcomer series right uh, trouble, uh, overcoming trouble, overcoming strife, overcoming offense, right? With what are your main learnings? And I, let me see. Um, Evie said, I learned that if my cup is filled with, with offense, there's no room for God to fill it with other things. And also that nothing can be accomplished with strife, that when there is no agreement, God is not in it. Yes, definitely love that. Um, Ina said, what if I hear an instruction? I didn't, I didn't did but it seems like it doesn't work does that mean i heard wrong no this is this is what um it, this is a question actually uh it's from aine this is where persevering comes in um it didn't mean that you heard wrong right i don't i don't think you're gonna um go to that um, what's this um to that thinking right away right um but maybe there's something else maybe there's more maybe there's um, something else that you're missing. I don't know. It's again, it's just asking the Holy Spirit step by step until you break through, right? It's not stopping until you break through and not allowing any unbelief, right? Not allowing any kind of like that doubt in your mind that, like, oh my gosh, I heard wrong. Maybe I'm not hearing God. Maybe I'm not maybe um i'm not uh, getting the right uh answers you know all those stuff that's doubt right just remove that and say okay lord i did that um, what else lord what is the next step what is the next step what is the next step it's always that and again guys i'm talking from from experience it's always for me it's just seeking the lord and say lord what else <laughs> lord what else what else what else can i do and it's not um it's not with the attitude of exhaustion or you know or or um it's with the attitude of of excitement right and and because you know that you know that one of these days you're going to break through 
right? You know that you know that one of these days you're, you're going to receive and have the, the victory manifested in your life, right? So it's, it's always being excited with the next step. So just having that, that heart um, correct as well when you're seeking the Lord. Uh, Olive said, believed, claimed, and received God's words and promises. Any challenges that is happening in your life is not from the Lord, not from God. We are equipped already with ability, capabilities, and talents that we need to that we need to accomplish the purpose that God created, uh, that created wants us to do. That's what I learned from our discussion and implementing in my life. Awesome! Wow, that's a lot. Mitch said, I was amazed to know that it was also included in the Bible that it's not good to be the one causing or triggering other people to sin, to hate, or we were talking about dispersing offense, right? <laughs> That's actually also one of my main learnings um, during uh, my meditation on these things. It's dispersing, dispersing and, and sharing, sharing our offense with other people, right? Definitely not not good anyway so let me go ahead and continue so number four um, about overcoming trouble right number four is what is your judgment what is your judgment okay let me explain how do you handle a negative report what do I mean by negative report? You find out about, about a critical illness, for example, or someone gets into an accident, or you lost your job, right? How do you handle this? What is your initial reaction, right? That's what I said. What is your judgment? What is your initial reaction when you hear these negative reports, right? Matthew 12, 36 to 37, I'm going to read to you. 36 it says, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Every idle word, words that you, you spoke because just out of your emotions maybe, out of whatever, you, you didn't think about it, right? You just, you just spoke it. And it says here that they will, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Now, let me just tell you, this word judgment here, we're not talking about the judgment in the last days. Okay, we're not about we're not talking about you going to heaven or to hell. It's not talking about that. The Greek, the original Greek word of, of this word judgment here means trial, accusation, condemnation, and this I like. It's decision given concerning anything. Concerning anything, right? It's a decision given concerning anything. And let me continue with verse 37. It says, For by words you will be justified and by words you will be condemned now by your words listen guys by your words by the words that come out of your mouth you are making a decision you are making a decision concerning the report that you have received right concerning the news that you have heard how do you handle a negative report the first words that you that that you speak the first words that come 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 out of your mouth guys listen is the very judgment that you give in that specific situation okay will the negative report be established in your life or will it be turned around for good now it depends and it's your choice right it depends and it's your choice why because the situation will depend on the first words again First words that come out of your mouth when you receive the negative news, when you receive a negative report. That's your very judgment on your situation. And you see, a lot of times, it's not really so much about the situation. It's not really so much about the problem or the trouble that you are facing. It's not really about that, right? Because we know it's going to come. We know it's going to come, right? But it is how you judge your situation the words of judgment that you speak over your situation these things are the ones that matter right these things are the one that determines the results and the and the final outcome of your situation this is very important guys again matthew 12 37 says depending on the words that you speak you are either what 
you're either justified or condemned. Justified means rendered innocent, free, righteous. Condemned means guilty, execution of a sentence, punished. So you will either be justified or condemned. So if a doctor tells you that you are in a critical condition, physically, right? Uh, you're sick. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? What are the first words that are going to come out of your mouth? Are you going to start crying and then start, start asking the doctor, okay, doc, how much time do I have left? Is that what you're going to do? Is that what you're going to say? Or are you going to be very quick to rebuke, right? Rebuke and cancel the negative report. What are you going to do? Right. And, and these, again, as I said, it's your choice. It depends on um, what you choose to say in that specific moment. Now, if someone gets into an accident, for example, what are the first words that are uh, going to come out of your mouth? Let's just say you heard someone, someone that's close to you who got into an accident. Are these going to be words of panic? Are these going to be words of fear? Right. Or are you going to break the enemy's work right there and then and then speak life over that situation? What are you going to do? Right. You see, this is also connected to my very first point about um, about this overcoming trouble. And I said, understand that our troubles are not from the Lord, because you know what? If this truth is not established in your heart. If you think that our troubles are from the Lord, right, then why would you rebuke it? Why would you resist it? If, if you think that the Lord is allowing it, that the Lord has sent this to your life for your own good, why would you even rebuke and resist it, right? But if you believe the other way around, if you know this is not from the Lord, hey, this is from the enemy, right? This is this accident, this sickness, whatever this trouble is, right? It's from the enemy. So then therefore, you're going to be very quick to resist and rebuke and cancel this work right there and then, right? Because you know it in your heart that it's not from the Lord. And that's why we need to have these roots established, right? You need to have these roots established in your heart and in your mind and in the words that come out of your mouth. Now, by the way, we have more uh, information about this, more expanded conversation on, on the judgment that you make. Um, it's actually a power hour that we did. I don't know what month, but it's about uh, the title is Believer's Authority. So if you want to listen more and if you want to uh, learn more about this, about the judgment that you make uh, through the words that you speak, uh, Believer's Authority was the topic and it's under Power Hour as well. Anyway, so number five, I'm just looking at some of your comments here. Olive said, Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes, Proverbs 18, 21. Speak life, abundance, and blessings. Rebuke the negative report. It's not for me. Yes, you can, you can also say, this is not for me, right? This is not part of my covenant with you, Lord God. This is not part of my inheritance, right? So then, therefore, you need to go. <laughs> you sickness need to leave now in Jesus' name, right? Okay, number five, and this is my last point for, again, we we're talking about overcoming troubles. Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. When you, what, when you do, um, what do you do? Okay, this is a question. What do you do when um, you get ready for, we get this a lot here in the Philippines, typhoon, right? When we know there's a typhoon coming, what do you do or when do you prepare for it is the question. When do you prepare for a typhoon? Is it before it comes or when it's already here? Uh, I mean, the answer is obvious, right? When, before it comes, you prepare for it. Because when it's already here, it's probably too late, right? It's probably too late. Or it will definitely be very difficult, right, to deal with it. Because, again, um, you should have prepared before it came. Now, this is the same with our faith, guys. When we talk about preparation of our heart, right? This is the same with our faith. We work on strengthening our faith now before any major trouble comes, right? And when you do, when trouble comes, it will come and it will go very quickly, right? It will go very qu quickly. It will not stay in your life. It will be temporary because you have taken the time to equip and empower yourself. 
equip and empower yourself and strengthen your faith in the Lord, right? And what about this? Training your tongue. This is part of preparation as well, guys. Training your tongue, your mouth. When do you train your tongue to speak only the things that are aligned with the Lord? When do you do that? Because this is huge, guys. And I've been, you know, I've been talking about this. I've been um, practicing this in my life. And you know what? I fail. I still fail, right? It, it's not something that is, it sounds very simple, but it's not easy to do. Again, it's training your tongue to speak only the things that are aligned with the Lord. And and this is connected to the last point that we just talked about, right? It's speaking judgment over your situation. Um, right now, what you have is knowledge. You know, we're, we're talking about this and you know this, right? In your mind, you know this. This is knowledge. Now you understand that the first, that the first words, as we talked about, about the judgment, right? That the first words that you speak is very crucial to the outcome of your situation, right? You know it with... Um, uh, in your mind now the application will be very different and again i'm speaking from experience right the application will be very different the bible says in matthew twelve thirty four, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks your mouth will automatically speak the thoughts and the words that are in your heart and that are in your mind, especially when you are in a situation that's, that's um, stressful, when you are in a tight and very critical situation, right? Your mouth, your, your, uh, if your heart and your mind are filled with fear, filled with worry, filled with complain, you complain a lot, right? Um, and you complain about everything in your life, then what, what kind of words do you think are going to come out of your mouth when trouble comes? If you did not take the time to fill your heart and your mind with the Word of God, with faith, right? What kind of words do you think are going to come out of your mouth when trouble comes? Right? So preparation is key. It's preparing your heart when everything is okay, when everything is well. Preparation is now, right? Preparation is now. Preparation, again, is filling your heart, filling your mind with the words of faith, with the word of God, right? That if trouble comes, um, then these are the words. These are the very judgment to your situation. These are the words that will come out of your mouth automatically because your, your heart and your mind, your mind, are filled with these things, right? Preparation is also spending time with the Lord and just spending time with the Holy Spirit and allowing Him, right, to minister to you, to strengthen you on a daily, consistent basis, not only when you have issues, right, not, not only when you have problems, but this is on a consistent basis. Preparation is also training yourself, and this is hard, guys, <laughs> Tra uh, uh, guys and ladies, okay? It's training yourself to zip your mouth, close your mouth if you don't have anything good to say because you understand that um, there's power to the words that you say, right? And preparation is also training yourself to choose to speak life in every occasion to every person in any circumstance. May that be a small thing or a big thing. Right? It's choosing to speak life every moment, every time you open that mouth, right? But if you don't have anything good to say, it's better to just close your mouth, right? Not say anything. Zip it. Zip it. And these things, guys, and again, it's preparation. And these things take spiritual discipline, right? Um, and they're not easy. They're simple, yes, but they're not easy. They will take time. Again, I have been speaking about this for years and years and years. I am... I have started the journey, right? I've started the learning process, but I'm still on that journey. I'm still learning. But you know what? With the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will empower us, will equip us to do all of these things, right? They're not impossible, okay? They're not impossible because of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, so that's overcoming trouble. I want to see, I want to see if you have any question. Um... Uh, Mary Vic says, so blessed that 
being in this group and learning from our power hour was God's way of preparing me and us, yes. Knowing our authority and identity in God delivered us when enemy deceived us by striking our family with COVID. Yeah, you know what? That's that's the trouble, right? You know, when, when the family gets sick and it's not just one person, but almost everyone in the household, right? What do you do? That's trouble. That's not from the Lord, okay? Whoever here says that it's from the Lord, let's talk. <laughs> but that's not from the Lord. And so what do you do, right? Stand. Stand your ground and just know that you know your position. Position in Christ. Your identity in Christ. And just, just like what Marivik said. Okay, ang hirap isip kapag emotion filled ka. Yes, ay ne. Talagang mahirap, di ba? And that's why I said it's... it's uh, they sound very easy, you know, very simple, but not easy to do. And that's why we need to train, right? We need to train. It's not going to be just a one thing. I heard it. Oh, I can apply it in my life. I'm not saying it's impossible right away, but it's a process. That's why uh, the, the Bible says in Romans 12 too, it's a renewing of the mind, right? It's a process of continuous process of renewing of our minds, right? Yes. Uh, um yeah van says speak to your mountains speak to your problems right rebuke it resist it um okay so let's let's go ahead and jump to overcoming discouragement and we have 30 minutes okay i hope i hope we can uh, finish all these things marvin says when you're having marriage trouble but you're not talking to each other you know there there is some um, uh, in marriage, right? I think there's a place for just quieting yourself um, and and going to another room maybe and just pray, right? Um, and just not talk to your spouse for a moment, okay? Whatever that moment is, is it 30 minutes? Is it an hour, right? <clears throat> but take your time and take a moment to just quiet yourself with the lord not with the enemy right with the lord and just ask the holy spirit to minister to you ask the holy spirit to break the lies that is going through your head right and then right and that's why you're not talking to each other i think that's the not talking to each other part but it's not healthy to not talk to each other period <laughs> okay i'm just saying you just need that small moment to not talk to each other so that you give space to the holy spirit and allow the holy spirit to minister to you and then you talk to your spouse right and then you talk to your spouse and then you come into agreement with your spouse and then apologize whatever you need to do whatever the holy spirit told you to do right and then um again just make sure that you um have uh, in agreement again, you know, with, with you and your spouse. Anyway, and that's very important. Um, Marie says, what you are teaching to sell is in alignment with what I received from the Lord at the beginning of my Sabbath year, uh, especially in speaking life and declaring God's word, word over my situation. Yes, and you know what, guys? Declaration, confession, what comes out of our mouth with our faith, it's so powerful right if you want to change your situation change the words that come out of your mouth you know that's the very um yeah if you have issues if you have troubles and it's just always there and you you, you feel like nothing is changing maybe because you're not changing the words that's coming out of your mouth right and watch what you're saying. Maybe if you need to record yourself on a daily basis and say, okay, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to put a recorder with me and just every time, right? And every time you open your mouth, you record what you're saying. And see, and see if, if what you're saying is aligned to what you want to experience, right? Anyway, um, wow, you have comments, guys. Okay. Uh, Rod said, how about events that are so overwhelming? I've seen people who were overwhelmed by a negative event, like losing a child and their spirit were broken. How can we console them? Okay, so you're talking about consoling someone, right? Um, consoling someone. First, you pray for them, right? Um, and of course, you share compassion and stuff and and understand their situation the thing is when we talk about a uh, judgment right when we talk about 
words that come out of our mouth. You being the outsider, you being, let's just say, for example, you're talking about a friend, right? You don't have authority over the situation. So only them and their faith and the words that come out of their mouth right the words that come out of them that are going to come out of their mouth are the ones that's going to either change the situation for good or change the situation for worse and unfortunately it's it's hard to even minister to them these kind of things when they're already in that situation right it's it's going to be hard not to sound uh indifferent or not to sound ano ba I don't know what the word is. Parang wala kang pakialam sa, sa feelings nila, right? It's, it's hard to, to not sound like that. That's why, as, as I said, preparation is now, right? And preparation for you first and for your family so that when that thing, those these kind of things happen to you, you know what to do. Now, about your friend and about people around you, then share this, right? When, when there's no issue, there's no problem, share this. Have a Bible study. Let's talk about this. You know, I heard about this in Matthew, whatever, whatever, and just discuss this and share the revelations that you're getting, right? And that's the best thing to prepare these people, the people around you. But when they're already there, again, it's kind of like a typhoon, right? When they're already, when you are already in the middle of, of, of the issue, it's going to be hard to eat, to start even, you know, talking about these things. Anyway, um, I hope that kind of answered your question, Rod. Uh, Evie says, says, quiet yourself with the Lord, not with the enemy. <laughs> this is simple and, and yet not easy. You know what? I, I know it's not easy, but you know the best practical way that I would recommend um, uh, is, is when you go into whatever that space, right? Whatever room you go to just to quiet yourself. Even if it's just a small space, even if it's a literal closet, right? You go in there and, and just speak in tongues. Speak in tongues, speak in tongues and just say, Lord, let your will be spoken through me right now. Let your will about the situation with whatever um, um, argument that you had with your spouse or with a close friend, right? Let your, let your will be spoken through me. Uh, in this situation, oh Lord God, right now. And then start speaking in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues, right? Because again, at that specific moment, your emotion is so high, you don't know what to do, right? You don't know the right prayers to pray that allow the Holy Spirit to take over, right? That's that's what you're doing when you're when you're speaking in tongues. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to you and at the same time to pray for you because you do not know what to pray. Right. Um, and I think that's that's the best thing that I, I, I would do in, in those situations. Uh, Martin said, keep in mind that your enemy is not your spouse, but the spirit that's causing the strife between you and your spouse. Definitely. That's a, that's a very good point, uh, Martin. And that's, I think, in response to what Rod was saying. And you know what? Not only with spouse, but with anyone, right? Your enemy is not your friend, your spouse, your parents, your sister, your sibling. They're not your enemy. They're being used by the enemy, right? Um, but they're not your enemy. And so you got to know when you start praying, right? You got to know um, who and what you are dealing with, okay? Insensitive. Okay, that's the word. <laughs> You don't want to be insensitive. You know, the, the person is going through a specific situation, kind of like what you said, um, lost a child, right? What do you do? You're not going to go and say, what words did you speak? What were the first words you spoke? Oh, you spoke judgment to your situation already, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's again, very insensitive. Okay, so I, that's why we say preparation is now. Preparation is when the best time. I'm not saying, though, that you cannot you cannot change the situation when you're already there. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying the best time to prepare is now, right? Best time to prepare is now. Anyways, uh, um, okay, I think I read, I read most of your comments and thank you for the comments and uh, the questions. Okay, so I'm going to continue overcoming discouragement. And as I said, you know what, when troubles aren't handled, guys, they become discouragement. They do. And then um, allow me to re read to you Joshua 1 9. It says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Okay, what did God say? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. 
the Lord will be with you wherever you go. In this, uh, in the the same message is also in Deuteronomy thirty one eight, almost similar. And let me allow me uh, to read this to you. Deuteronomy thirty one eight it says, "The Lord Himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged." So again, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Right? The word discouraged. Here, um, in the King James Version, it actually used the word dismayed, right? Um, in these two verses, it's the same thing. It's from the original Hebrew word that means be shattered, be dismayed, be broken, to break down, to be afraid. Now, what causes discouragement? Guys, in, in your life, and I'm sure, I think all of us, right? I would say everybody here. If you're an adult <laughs> or um, young adult, you have experienced some discouragement. What caused discouragement in your life? Can you share that with me real quick? What caused discouragement or what causes discouragement in other people's lives as well? I'm going to wait. And while I'm waiting, um, yeah, well, I have some answers. But while I'm waiting, I'm looking at some of your comments. I'm going to refresh my monitor. Unmet expectations, broken promises. Definitely. Yes. Unmet expectation and broken promises. Agree? Anything else? What causes discouragement? Failures. You've been trying over and over and over and you keep on failing, right? Um, loss of identity, plans not going well. Marivik said, when you feel that you're left behind. Emon says, listening to wrong people may cause discouragement. That's true. You know what? Sometimes you feel so good during the day and then you talk to someone and the, this, this person gives you a different perspective of what's going on and things like that. Again, wrong, bad perspective. And so after that conversation, you're discouraged, right? You're discouraged. Uh, rejection is big. Um, being embarrassed, yes. Um, your answers, uh, your, your prayers not being answered, yes. Loss of confidence uh, is, um, yes. Mali ata spelling ko, not sure. Uh, spelling ng embarrassed? Ah, not sure as well. <laughs> okay, plans didn't, did not push through, yet you get frust frustrated. Yeah, yeah bottom line, um, you're expecting something to happen, right? And it didn't happen. Um, you get discouraged when expectations aren't met, period, right? Either by our situation, by our circumstance, by the results that we get or by the people around us right you're expecting someone to um, buy you a cake on your birthday and that someone didn't right you know something like that then you get discouraged um and and there are different ways to be discouraged small or big i'm going to share with you my you know one of the big things for me is year after year from 2015 16, 17, 18, no, maybe it's 16, it started with 2016, 2017, 18, 19, right? Four years, guys, I, I have, for, for you who, who know, um, know me and, and Saldi, we have vision board and we set our goals every year, right? And every year, those goals were stayed the same for four years. They didn't change. Why? Because, of course, they did not happen, right? And 2019, I remember, you know, I was crying to Saldi and I was, I was, like, I was creating our vision board and creating our goals list again. And I was saying it's the same list. It's the same goal. I'm just changing the year, right? The <laughs> same list. And I was like, what is the point of even doing this if nothing is happening? For me, that's discouragement, right? What is the point? Like, I, I was expecting, and every year, you know what, guys? Every year, we would declare, this is the year, 
of our breakthrough. This is the year of our financial breakthrough, right? Every year we declare it. Every year we create this vision board that contains the same stuff and nothing happened. That's discouragement right there, right? That's discouragement right there. Um, but again, let me just read to you. Joshua 1, nine. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Deuteronomy 31.8. Again, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you he will never leave you nor forsake you you know what it's it's natural to be in a position of emotional um moment like that right because i've had a share of those things as well now here's the thing you just you need to be able to catch yourself right away give yourself a few minutes Okay, cry it out, right? Whatever, <laughs> cry it out. And then catch yourself right away. Cancel the words that you've spoken um, because you were cursing. I Well, I was cursing our goals and dreams and, and visions. So I took my moment, okay? And then when I was done, I was like, I canceled every words that I've spoken against our, our vision, our purpose, our goals, right? Cancel that and just allow go back to the truth and what is the truth i just read to you guys the lord will be with you wherever you go and he will never leave you nor forsake you now see here's the thing if you do not see god in your situation if you don't catch yourself if you don't know how to bounce back right away right if you fail to recognize the presence of god in your life if you believe a lie that god leaves you when you sin or you make a mistake or or you're not doing very well then discouragement comes and it will stay right and it will stay in your life now i, I like this one psalm 16 8 uh, and it says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. This, uh, this Psalm, it, Psalm 16 is a Psalm of David, right? It's a Psalm written by David. And actually, you know what, guys, uh, the, uh, David wrote 70, 75 Psalms in the entire book of Psalms. 75, so half, right? And some of these Psalms were written when he's troubled, when the enemies were after him, and yes, when he was discouraged, right? He, was, he, he wrote these psalms. And this again, Psalm 16, 8, it says, I have set the Lord always before me, even when he was discouraged, right? And what does this mean? And let me read to you the, the goodness translation. It says, I am always aware of the Lord's presence. The NIV translation, it says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. The NLT version, it says, I know the Lord is always with me. And because of this, David said again, he continued, and because of this, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Because David chose to be always aware of God's presence in his life, right? Because David saw God in everything, in every situation, especially in those troubled times when his enemy when king saul right were were going after him wanting to kill him in every situation the bible says he was not moved he was not shaken right and of course joshua 1 9 and deuteronomy 31 8 says if we acknowledge the truth that the lord is always with us then we will not be discouraged we will not be discouraged. Just going back to that truth, guys, right? And bottom line, we're discouraged when our expectations aren't met. Yes, that's definitely a reason. But you know what? The deeper issue, right? Aside from our expectations not being met, the deeper issue here is we are discouraged when we're not acknowledging the Lord in our circumstance. When we're not seeing the Lord in our situation. Where is God? What is God telling you about your situation? Where is God in that situation, right? Don't tell me He's not there. He's always there with you. So then, therefore, the question should be, Lord, what are you doing in this situation? What are you telling me about my situation, Lord, right now? Right? It's asking. It's just going back there because God is always with you. It's acknowledging His presence, acknowledging His guidance and His solutions. Right? And that's, that's when you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, 
what is the solution here what are divine ideas and strategies that i that you can share with me that i can do right that i can obey his promises in your life lord can you remind me holy spirit you said you are going to remind me of things that you have said that you have told me of your word can you remind me lord god of your promises of your promises in my life but then the thing is when you allow the flesh when you allow the physical when you allow the world what the world um when you allow those voices that are coming from the world to be stronger, right? The trouble to be stronger than the word of God, then you're going to be discouraged. So it's just putting that into a higher, into it's putting the word of God and God, right? Uh, um, as the main priority and just silencing every voices that are not from the Lord. Now, okay, let me just um, give you... Okay, 943. How do you overcome? I have pretty much mentioned a few, but let me just um, give it to you in one, two, three. I think I have three points. How do you overcome discouragement? Um, Saudi said, you also need to cancel all the words spoken whenever you have a fight with your spouse. This is so important. Otherwise, it will open the door for the enemy. Definitely, right? And I think... That's why I said, bottom line, guys, you need to be wa watchful for what you say to, with every conversation that you have, even conversations to yourself, right? It's just watching the words that come out of your mouth and say, okay, was that a blessing or a curse? Did I just curse my spouse? Did I just curse my situation, my dreams, my vision, my goal, my kids, right? And just be very quick to cancel those words to so just break those words those words do not have power i'm sorry lord i i said those things i break those words right now they don't have power they don't have influence over the situation over my children over my spouse over our dreams whatever that that is right and then uh vanessa said if you allow your emotions to get better to get the better of you then you're toast <laughs> yes uh, definitely okay let I, i'm gonna expand on that one but um, yeah, so number one, acknowledge God and not the world. I hope I have time. I'm going to be, um, I have to speak faster. Acknowledge God and not the world. Okay, what do I mean by this? Choose to see God in everything. Not the world, right? Not, not what the world is telling you. Just like David in Psalm 16, 8, right? You will not be moved. You will not be shaken if you recognize and acknowledge God in every situation that you have this is guys this is having the law of acknowledgement work in your life again i'm going back to laws and principles um of the kingdom because i don't think we can even talk about the word without talking about laws and principles of the kingdom right and this is the law of acknowledgement what you acknowledge you give power to that's bottom line right what what you acknowledge you give power to so you have a choice to acknowledge what the enemy is doing in your life start complaining about what's not wrong talk about your failures talk about how how bad the situation is talk about how bad your marriage is talk about your trouble talk about the mistakes right talk about all of the bad stuff you can you have the choice to do that or choose to acknowledge what god has done the things that he had done in your life what god is doing and what he is about to do in your life right so you have a choice what are you going to focus on what are you going to acknowledge and again point number one is acknowledge god in everything not the enemy not what the world is saying number two acknowledge the unseen and not the seen okay this is a bit challenging right again acknowledging the unseen unseen the invisible and not the seen, not the visible. Uh, let me read to you 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary and what is unseen is eternal. Uh, when, it talks, when it talks about what is seen, it's talking about our physical realm, right? It's talking about what, what we see in the physical. What the world is proclaiming so loud on your face right that's that scene that's the seen world what is the unseen the unseen is the heavenly realm the unseen is the invisible what is really happening in the spirit 
right? That's the unseen. And the Bible says, again, fix your eyes, focus, right? And acknowledge the unseen, the spirit realm, and not the physical realm. Not the physical realm. So when Aina was talking about our emotions, um, and also um, Vanessa was talking about our emotions as well, that's really talking about these things. That's part of the seen world. That's part of our physical. That's part of the flesh, right? That's part of the things that are obvious. Now again, what the Bible is saying is fix your eyes on the invisible. Fix your eyes on the heavenly realms. Now allow me to read uh, to you the ver the verses before this, okay? Second uh, Corinthians four verse sixteen. It says, "Therefore we do not lose heart." And I like this because this is like talking about discouragement, right? We do not lose heart, uh, though outwardly we are wasting away. Okay, it says outwardly we are wasting away. Outwardly in the physical, right? It seems impossible. It seems difficult. Right? In the physical, that's what out outwardly is. And then it continues, it says, Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. Inwardly, in the spirit, in the invisible realm, we are actually being renewed. We're actually being strengthened, strengthened every day. And in verse 17, it says, For our light and mom momentary troubles are achieving for us an, inter an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Now, I'm going to continue again. Verse 18, it says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but, but on what is unseen, sin since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Guys, again, go back and read and meditate on these things, okay? Uh, it's, uh, I'm not going to take a lot of time to explain this, but, but let me try, okay? When it talks about uh, you're seeing in the physical and what the world is showing you uh, in the physical, these things, the Bible says, are temporary, right? Your troubles, your discouragement, your situation, whatever this is that you're experiencing, these are temporary. Why? Because we talked about this, right? Because the Holy Spirit gives you solutions to get out, for you to get out of your situation, for you to get out of your trouble, right? For you to get out of whatever it is, circumstance that's not from the Lord. The Holy Spirit will give you, and that's why, again, it's temporary, Okay, but then it says, but the unseen, the spirit realm is eternal. It's permanent. It doesn't change. And you know what? I'm looking at this. It's these are your blessings. These are the promises of the Lord for you. This is your calling and your purpose. These are, somebody said about answers to your prayers. This is in the invisible, guys. The answers to your prayers, the truth, they are in the unseen. They are in the heavenly realms and they are eternal okay when i say that they are in the heavenly realms um ephesians 1 3 it even talks about this it says every every blessing right has already been given to us in the heavenly realms it's talking about in the unseen realm right um and then i guess and then uh, and then uh, it says here they are eternal let me just talk about this real quick because sometimes when you when you read about this word when you read this word eternal right does this mean that we don't get to experience trouble and all of these things um or no does this mean that we don't get to experience the promises of the lord the calling the purpose the answers to to our prayers until we die and go to heaven right because we're talking about that these things are eternal these things these blessings are in the heavenly realms and they're eternal right but listen definitely no right definitely you will experience these things here and now because listen you are living your eternal life now and i don't know i think some of you this is like a, a, a revelation but listen guys you are living your eternal life now when you receive jesus as your lord and savior when you were born again right your eternal life started your eternal life started so then therefore you have access to the physical which is obvious right but you also have access to all of these things what are these things blessings promises from the lord your calling and your purpose the answers to your prayers the truth right you have access to all of these things in the spirit realm in the unseen realm because your eternal life had already started 
right? These things are in the unseen. And that's why the Bible says, hey guys, focus on what is in the unseen. Focus on these things because these are the things that, at, that, the, that God had given us, right? And um, they are eternal. They are permanent in our lives. Anyway, I hope you guys got that. If you have any questions, just let me know. I, I, this is um, a bit deeper. And um, we actually talk about this in our spiritual warfare, spiritual authority uh, training. Um, we talk about this more in detail. But, but yeah, just, just understand that we as believers, we have access to these two realms, right? To the physical and to the invisible so you need to understand that do not only focus on what you feel, on, on your five senses, right? Bottom line, what you feel, what you smell, what you hear, what you taste, um, and what you sense. It's, it's not just limited to these, right? You need to be more focused on what is happening in the spirit. Because when you know what is happening in the spirit, it will give you hope. It will give you life, right? It will give you, you will see the blessings that God had already prepared for you. Right. Um, and what is the key again? Again, it says fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Again, it's the principle of acknowledgement, acknowledging the invisible and not the visible. OK, and you focus on what's going on. If you uh, focus on what's going on around you, all the bad news, all the division, all the con confusion, the lack, the sickness, it's really you know, it's really very difficult not to get discouraged, right? I mean, just come on, just turn on your, your television or your, um, uh, just go to any news uh, in your phone, right? You will be discouraged, definitely. You want to welcome discouragement, just start right there. But you have to decide, right, on a daily, moment-to-moment -moment basis, what are you going to focus on? What is the truth for you? What are you going to recognize? What are you going to acknowledge in your life? It's a choice. And whatever you choose to acknowledge, again, whatever you choose to focus on, they will be manifested. They will be established in your life because it's a kingdom principle, guys. It's a kingdom law. Um, they will be established in your life. And can I just say this? Do I have time? 9.55. Mm-hmm. Aina said, thank you, sis. I need this reminder. Feeling ko personal mo kinakausap. <laughs> I think I talked to a lot of you guys personally during this power hour. <laughs> you messaged me after, after this. So, yeah. Um, Aina said, I was frustrated earlier. My husband told me the enemy was disrupting my emotions. So, he took me on a date and fed me. Thank you, Lord, for my hobby. Oh, nice. Diba? That's good. Um, okay. So, let me just tell you on the side. I know, um, of course, social media, Netflix, and all that stuff. You guys are very familiar, and you've heard of the the uh, Netflix Netflix series Squid Game, right? And I just have to say this, guys. Uh, did not watch it. I did not watch it. I we told our kids not to watch it. Um, but I have, I've looked at reviews. I've seen the trailer. I of course I was curious. I was like, what is this about? Because I heard it's it's uh, number one in Netflix, right? It's disturbing, it's bloody, it's violent, it's heavy, it's eerie, it's brutal, it's dark. At least these were the words that were used, right, to describe uh, the series. Now, let me ask you, based on what we are learning here, is there value to even filling our minds and filling our hearts with these things, with these kind of shows? Is there even value to watching these things? And I'm not going to answer that for you. I mean, personally, me and my family, no, right? Because, listen, at least for me, my understanding is these things will block the voice of the Holy Spirit in my life. <clears throat> and, and I'm sure you, you're already uh, realizing this throughout our conversation. It's going to the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to you, hearing specific instructions from the Holy Spirit. You need to be open, right? You need your heart to be ready and open to receive. Because even though the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you, if your heart is not ready, if your heart is filled with disturbing, bloody, violent, heavy, eerie, brutal, dark stuff, right? Then you're not going to be able to receive. I just have to say that. <laughs> Anyway, sorry po sa mga 
um, nakapanood. But I, I just have to say that, guys. And, and if you watched it already, then that's fine. But maybe take the time to just cancel all of those things that you probably are not aware that, that um, impacted you, but definitely it did, right? And just cancel and just break it and just make sure that it's, um, it's out, okay it's out there's definitely demonic um influences in those shows by the way i just have to say anyway acknowledge god's dream and plans for you and not the failures okay this is number three and it's my last one uh can i finish uh, i'm probably gonna be do over time for five minutes but just allow me because this is the third one acknowledge god's dreams and plans for you and not the failures you know what guys when we are discouraged we actually do the opposite right we acknowledge we talk about we um, imagine you know we think about the failures the mistakes the things that the person didn't do whatever those those things are those things that cost you to be discouraged right you kind of like uh, offense you nurture and you um, just think about it more right and see the thing is number three is acknowledge God's dreams and plans for you instead of the failures right jeremiah 29 11, and this is a very famous verse guys i'm sure you've heard of this several times it says for i know the plans that i have for you says the lord right plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future right this is so good god has plans for your life and again what did it say prosper you not to harm you in other in in the goodness translation it says not to bring disaster right and by the way guys the hebrew word for this uh for this word disaster or harm is actually from the hebrew word that means what that means wickedness that means trouble that means affliction adversity harm right so listen this is already god speaking in saying hey I don't plan to harm you. I don't plan to bring affliction, trouble, adversity, harm in your life. So again, this is another word to break that that um, religious belief that troubles are from the Lord, that afflictions are from the Lord, right? And then, and then what else? To give you hope and a future, right? Hope means it's um, an expectation of something good, right? That is hope. And God says that, Anak, I give that to you, right? I give that to you. And what did it say again? God has the plans. He has the plans, right? He has it. Now, what do we need to do? We need to receive the plan so that we can cooperate with the plan, so that we can have the plans established in our lives. That's really the challenge. That is the challenge for us, right? God has the plans. This is us, right? We need to receive the plans from the Lord. So it doesn't stop there. Yes, it's good. It's good to know. It's good to recognize that God has the plans, right? But then we need to receive it from the Holy Spirit. We need to receive a revelation of those plans so that we can cooperate, right? So that we can establish those things in our lives. And whatever, it, it may be as simple as you declaring God's plan for you, right? With faith, you declare God's plan for your life. It could be as simple as that. It could be, or it could be more. You know, again, it depends on what you receive from the Lord. Now, if you're too busy fo focusing and talking about what's wrong, what you don't like, your failures, your problems, you, your discouragement, right? Um, then you will have a hard time receiving these plans from the Lord because, again, your focus is on the wrong things. So anyway, so I hope you got that. And that was, uh, allow me to just close with this. And this is, uh, I just want to read to you. Uh, I just want to read to you guys the, uh, it's a um, testimony uh, that I posted in, in our group. I just want to read this to you. And I think this is also connected to the conversation that we had, right? It says, uh, sis, thank you for praying for um, her husband, right? And praying for us last Tuesday. Thank you for telling me to tell her husband, right? To declare. And after we spoke, uh, after, because we spoke over the phone, I told him to declare the prayer that I'm going to lead and believe in his heart by faith, right? Declare 
that you are healed from anxiety and the lack of sleep. Ginawa niya sis and I was crying while I was leading the prayer and lay hands on him. Nung gabi, paghiga niya, antok na siya agad and he slept for 8 hours. Thank you Lord and thank you. Uh, listen, the background of this is the husband could not sleep for almost a month. And just imagine that guys. Walang tulog for almost a month. Um, sleep was probably an hour to two hours a day for almost a month. And when we had this conversation, they were so close to, she was actually asking me if I know of a, a doctor, a psychiatrist that they can go to and actually ask about this situation, right? But then you know what? Let's pray muna, diba? Let's pray and, and, and um, declare. And then till today, okay na ang sleep niya. And I'll always rem remind him to declare. I made him a prayer guide na natutunan ko sa'yo. And I included verses from the Bible for healing and plead the blood of Jesus prayer as well. I just, I'm just thankful to our Father God. Sobra till today, tears of joy pa din ako. Before, I was already telling him to declare. Pero di, di, Ako alam, di ko alam if he's doing it. I'm just glad now he's doing it already kasi naririnig ko siya. Okay, so this is so good and there's so many things going on in this. It's, it's a short testimony, guys, but there's so many things happening uh, happening in this uh, laws and principles that we can learn from. I mean, first of all, what, what, what can we learn from this? The power of agreement, right? Husband and wife came together. They prayed together. They agreed in faith right that the healing is there right the power of confession the power of declaration it's declaring the word of god it's declaring uh, the healing words of god over over his life right and it's from him uh, initially because you know what i i know sometimes and i tell you wives or moms right to lay hands on on your spouse or on your children and declare but you know what it's also different when you allow them to be the one declaring right there's there's a, a different there's power to that when they themselves in faith declare the word of god and you help them and you guide them and this is what she did right she she led her spouse um to that prayer what to say what to declare and that's how he received his healing isn't that amazing guys declaration coming into an agreement right and what else what else? Ano pa bang um, the law of agreement? A anyways, and of course, the law of acknowledgement is there. It's just acknowledging that, and it, it's good because she entertained the, th the thought of, of going to a doctor, but then before even that, right, she acknowledged the power of God in their life, the power of God to heal, and that's the power of acknowledgement right there right um that you know what okay i'm i'm going to set this aside but you know what i am going to pray i'm going to pray with my husband and this is is um and the lord will heal and the lord and and my husband will receive his healing right so this is very powerful and i hope you guys learn from that um anything else I, we're done yay 1005 um i don't see any other question uh ah okay so you have comments here Okay. Dolly said, no, it opens negative spirits such as fear. I didn't watch. Yes. <laughs> yes, mother. <laughs> I'm not your mom. <laughs> right? But children, listen. Do not watch Squid Game. <laughs> but, you know, it's up to you guys. I'm not... Again, I'm not trying to control you guys. I'm just telling you uh, the possible consequences. Anyway, I watch episode one. Okay, cancel it. Done. Brian, no condemnation, right? Diba? Wala namang condemnation. What is the best way to handle a bad report from a doctor? Best way, rebuke it right away, right? Doctor says this. This is your sickness. This is what's wrong. What's wrong? What's wrong? The doctor will tell you everything that's wrong in your body. Definitely, right? And put it in written format as well and give it give that uh, report to you. What do you say? What do you say? Are you going to say, of course, in a nice word, you can say, you know what, doc? I am a believer and I believe in Jesus and I know that I am healed. I know that I walk in divine health. So thank you for, for this, but I don't receive it. It's not for me. 
and I break it in Jesus' name. I mean, you can say that. I, I don't think it's uh, offensive to the doctor, I hope, right? Um, but you can say it in a nice way, and you can just declare right away, Doc, I'm a believer, right? I'm a follower of Jesus. And let me just tell you, and I understand you're doing your job, but I do not accept this for me. This is not for me. And if, if anything, that's temporary, but this is not for me. That's going to go away, and I'm healed because I walk in divine health. And yeah, and I rebuke this, and I just resist this in Jesus' name. You know, say it in a nice way, but right away, rebuke, reject, cancel, right? Uh, I realize that we should choose our doctor well then. Should be a doctor that you can acknowledge. Yes, there's also importance in, in that one. Rebuke the doctor behind your face mask if you don't want to say it out loud. <laughs> That's another one too, right? Go, Don't say anything. You know what? When you're in your doctor tells you whatever whatever don't agree don't nod your head don't do anything if you don't want to say anything just so no uh, parang poker face lang don't don't react right and then go to the bathroom right away and just say lord god i cancel every word that that doctor told me blah 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 I cancel all those words and just isa isa mo whatever the doctor said i just break those things they don't have power over my life over my body in jesus name right and just just cancel it it's like a seed guys you know when a seed is spoken when a word is spoken it's like a seed that's planted in your life right if you take that seed out right away it will be very easy easy lang right but however if you wait for a day two days one week two weeks right what happened to that seed it grows some roots and it goes deeper a little bit right and if it's deeper, it's a bit harder to uproot. That's all I'm saying. So that's that's why you want to cancel and rebuke right away. Anyway, uh, power of acknowledgement, doctors can't treat us best if we don't acknowledge them. If we don't respect, respect, you know, just want to make sure that when you are um, canceling, that you're making it a point that you're not against the doctor. You're not you're not rebuking the doctor. That you respect and honor them, right? But what you are rebuking and canceling are those sickness those sickness on that paper right that's not for me so it's just making sure that doc you know especially if, if you know the doctor in a month doc you know naman this is not against you i respect you and i honor you i just want to and you know i'm a believer i just want to say you know all of these things i'm not receiving i believe i am completely healed i believe i walk in divine nature so whatever this is these are all temporary and and they're gone in Jesus' name. And just, just say that in a nicer way. Anyway, um, guys, thank you so much for staying another 10 minutes with me. We are over time. Allow me to pray for you guys. And we are done. Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for our discussion. Finishing overcoming trouble and um, overcoming discouragement. Lord, ultimately, Holy Spirit um, and, and your word. Lord God, it's, it's, it's enough for us and it's, it's a solution to every situation that we have. Holy Spirit, just allow us to learn from you. Allow us to learn how to zip our mouth. Allow us to learn how to just be a blessing to other people by speaking blessing over their lives, over their situation, over our lives in our situation as well, Lord God. Holy Spirit, remind us on a moment-to-moment -moment basis how important our words are, how important meditation on your words are as well so that we can align what we say to your word lord god and just allow us to devour your word allow us to meditate on your word and have it be part of our of, of our lives so that you know when things like this happen we can kick situations troubles affliction whatever those things are we can kick them out right away because we can stand up in confidence in faith with boldness right and just kick all of these things out out of our lives out of our family so lord this is our authority this is the power that you have given us in you lord jesus christ and we thank you for this we thank you that you are continuously um just teaching us holy spirit teaching us equipping us empowering us so that you prepare us for every good work thank you lord and i just speak this blessing over everyone here lord god that you are preparing us you are renewing our mind you are preparing our hearts and our minds for every good work so lord we thank you for this we praise you we glorify you lord god in jesus name we pray 
Amen and amen. Thank you guys. I will see you. Actually, this coming Thursday is going to be about rejection and I will give you instructions on that. Bye for now.